Welcome back to Brick Gaming Wide Show. Today is going to be part one of two of a hundred subscriber special. So in this video, I'm going to do mainly FAQs and kind of some Q&A questions I have had asked in the past. I got them written down and I'm ready to go. So please like, comment, and subscribe. If you're not subscribed, then you should definitely hit the subscribe subs well you should definitely hit the subscription button and just check out my channel the goal is to get to 1000 subscribers by the end of next year preferably august just so i can be like hey one year i gained 1000 subscribers thanks to the help of all of you guys so thank you guys so much and also check out my twitch at Burke gaming yg at one okay getting right into this i want to start off and this is going to be the longest topic i talk about but it's my history as a Yu-Gi-Oh player pretty much how I manage to play the game, get into the game, stuff like that. So this part might go on for a little while. If there's any sections you don't really care about, please feel free to skip ahead. But please check out the whole thing if you're interested in me as a player and kind of want to know a little bit more about my background. So starting off, um, I got into the game back in 2008. Um, back then, I wasn't really a good player per se. Uh, yeah, I just wasn't very good. I didn't get good at the game. Or even like do anything relevant in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh until 2015 when I started doing okay at locals and because I picked up the Tower Knights and I was doing okay with the Tower Knights. It it wasn't like my big break in Yu-Gi-Oh. I wasn't like winning locals. I wasn't even topping locals, but I was still doing better than like winning every single game. So I played the Tower Knights. Definitely not the most best build at the time. And then 2016. Uh, this was when I really started doing well in the game. 2016, I got my first regional top. Not in the way of back then, it was basically if you got first or second, you would um, get your invite or something like that. You had to do really, really well and you had to be like in one of the top positions. I was just on the border and I just really made it into the top, but it wasn't even top cut. It was like really, really, really small. Regional, but I did manage to make top eight and it did technically count as a top, but but I didn't get the invite because back then there was a completely different policy for how you get invites. Then after that, um, still in 2016, um, I started doing really well with Metal Foes when it came out. Metal Foes was a deck that really managed, man, well, I managed to get into the game with. It was also like the most affordable meta deck unless you count ABCs, which if you went all out, it could be real expensive. But Metal Foes was relatively inexpensive except for a few cards. So I was playing that deck just because that was the main deck I could afford at the time. So Melfos is still one of my favorite decks to this day. Sure, it doesn't do anything anymore, and sure, it's not like really the best deck, but it's one of my favorite decks of all time, and I managed to win pretty much five weeks in a row at one locals, and at the other locals, I won a pretty good amount of the um, rounds there. I think I got second place one week, and then the rest I was pretty much just first place straight across. I, I was just super nuts with the deck. It was one of the decks I just did super well with. Then, um, going into um, 2017, uh, I went to my first YCS in 2017. Um, it was, I flew out to YCS well, Seattle, I flew there, and um, yeah, I didn't do very well. So the plan was to play Metal Foes, and this was like right after Zodiacs had come out. So the plan was to play Metal Foes and do well with Metal Foes. Well, I, I decided to play Mermels instead. Which, I had no idea how to play Mermels. I was just like, yeah, dude, Mermels looks like fun. I always want to play Mermels. I'm going to play Mermels. Yeah, it didn't go very well. Also, both of my decks were pretty much in German at the time. And I had zero translation. And there wasn't, like, an easy way to pick up all the Metal Foes in English. Because they're, like, 10 cent bulk cards. Like, who's going to have, like, 10 cent bulk English cards? So, yeah, no. Uh, luckily, I didn't get called out on translations. And in this high defense, I did really well because I managed to pick up Zodiac. And I played Zodiac, uh, I think it was the exact deal with Zodiac Kaiju with a small hero engine because Dark Watt was really good going second. And then if you could tribute off your uh, Bones Monster for a Kaiju, it would just banish it. So it was really, really good. And I, I did pretty decently with that. Did well in the side events. And yeah. And then um, throughout the rest of 2017, I was basically playing Zodiac variants. And then eventually, like, I think at the end of 2017 or beginning of 2018, I got out of the game for about six months. So I was out of the game. I had no idea what was going on in the meta. I come back to the game. I, I get back into it. Come like, I, I've been out of the game for too long, and I was just focusing on other stuff at the time. So I managed to get back into the game. And, and, uh, yeah, I, I'm back in the game for a very brief time period before I decide I'm going to fly out to another YCS. Yeah, I had no idea what the meta was. I had, like, played in locals only a few times. I was like, yeah, man, 
Well, what could be the worst? This was like um, right when uh, Pendulum Magician and FTK was starting to go around, and your really only options for topping an event were Pendulum Magician variant, mainly the FTK variant, and True Dracos at this time. And I, I, I fly out to this YCS with one of my buddies of mine, and yeah, short story short, I took 60 card Grass Light Swarms. I actually did pretty well. Um, I, I didn't make top cut or anything like that. Oh no. No, I, I took almost no losses as well. I took like one loss there. And I, I didn't really win the rest of my games. Um, here, here's the story behind it. Um, so back then, it would take Pendulum Magician FTK like 20 minutes to do their FTK. Me being who I am, I, I didn't understand the FTK, so I would always let them play out just in case they were playing the regular version. I didn't know what I didn't know what Pendulum FTK was. I didn't even know what Pendulum FTK was until like round two or three, uh, or no round two. Yeah, so uh, no, it was round three when I learned what Pendulum FTK was, and I am drawing because game one he got, and then game two I went first. He couldn't do anything because I walked him out basically playing the game. He kind of bricked, and I was able to hit him for damage. And then oh, time in the round. That's what happens when you have like 20 minute long turns, first turns in Yu-Gi-Oh. You go into time so much. <clears throat> so basically from there, I just had a bunch of draws that did, did not top. I was a few points off from topping, but it was mostly the draws that really hurt. I had so many draws and this was like right after new time rules, I believe. So uh, then after that, I was... Um, Playing Pendulum Magician after that for a while. Uh, didn't really do anything too insane with that, but you know, I was still doing okay. Um, then, towards the end of 2018, going into 2019, it was kind of like media playing, kind of whatever. Um, 2019, like, really at this point, like, between the years of. The, the, between the end of 2018 became 2019, I had gone from playing really competitive decks to trying to bring um, Metal Foes back. I wasn't really all into the game at the time uh, because this was like when all the FTKs started coming out with uh, Firewall I think. I, I think in 2019 there were still Firewall FTKs. There, there were just a bunch of like rude, just, just to make this simple, there was a bunch of degenerate stuff going on. And then at the beginning of 2019 I decided to stop playing casually again and I got back into competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! And so I started going to uh, lots of regionals and lots of YCSs and that way I met like two or three a year, basically in 2018 and 2019. I think I did two, or not 2018, but 2019 I did like three. And then this year I had a whole bunch planned to do more, but I didn't really get to because of Corona. Corona kind of stopped those plans, but basically in 2019 I did like three events. And first event I went to, um, oh, what did I play at the first event? Okay, yeah, I played Melfos at the first event. Never mind, I was still doing casual stuff at the time. <laughs> I took, um, uh, this was also Orcus and that, that format with the Orcus, Salmon Great, when they were at full power. I, I took, <laughs> I took Melfos to one of those events. Short, short story short, I, I did not do well. Um, then the next event, I took, um, the hero dark dark warrior hand loop with like all that hero stuff in it and gum bar and I did okay. Uh, I'm dropping out towards the later latter rounds of the event just because I had not prepared sufficiently for the deck. I had just learned how to play the deck like a day before I t took it. Uh, <clears throat> so yeah, that, that didn't really work out. Then my next event I went to was a well this this was during orcus format game but this was after the ban list and i took orcus sky striker at the time the best deck i took orcus sky striker so i was like dude this is gonna be easy 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 win at this regional right so i'm winning pretty much all my rounds i think um by the latter rounds there's only two rounds left and i have exactly one draw and all wins one draw all wins and with two rounds left in the day Two, two rounds left, and I think there was like a six round event, so I'm looking pretty good. I'm looking so good at this point. So I go into my next round. I, I get lost, so I'm X11. I can still top this event though. Super, super nice. I can still top it. Um, don't look like too many people dropped, so I'm, I'm looking really, really good at this event. I go into the final round, and I get beaten by a deck that I had beaten earlier in the day, which was True Dracos. I've been in True Dracos like round one or round two, I had been Drew Dracos. Now, now this guy, this guy was prepared for this matchup. He main decked 
skill drain, soul drain, and pretty much just a bunch of anti orchid stuff. So he wins the dice roll, and as soon as it passes in my turn, he's like, skill drain, soul drain, anti spell. I'm like, bro, what is this? So yeah, it, it, it was very unfortunate. The guy just got like the best hands ever. I'm just looking at like, oh, wow, well, I guess Orca Sky Striker doesn't do anything now. So yeah, no, I got completely wrecked, but I, I still did okay. I would think I was four or five people off from getting into the top, top four, even top eight. I think it was um, for that event, it was, I feel like it was top eight, but I was like three or four people off. So I was really, really close. Unfortunately, I did not make it in due to that final game loss. If I had won that final game, yes, I would have been in um, sixth or seventh place, which would have put me in the top position. But, you know, it's unfortunate. I just need to do more events, I realize, after that. So the next event I go to is another YCS. I think, um, where was this YCS? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. But it was, like, over in Washington. Like, over in that state again. So I go to this YCS, right? And at this point, at this point after I finish up playing Orca Sky Striker, um, I, I was just going with super budget decks at this point because I was basically playing Pendulums and written Dimians again. So I ended up taking, like, this really budget... Pendulum Draco Palace deck. Was not expecting to do well with it. I was expecting to uh, do horrible with it. Well, well, um, round one and round two, uh, I think um, I lost round one and I lost round two. So I'm going into the rest of day X2, right? And to top in this um, region, or not regional, YCS, the worst you can do is X2. So I'm like, I can't lose another game. Well, well, I win all my other games. I'm at so this is, this is the most funniest comeback story ever. So I've won all my other games. I'm going to the final round, right? I'm super tired, okay? I'm really, really tired at this point. Now I had just been talking and trading with people all day. Um, basically, I, I had to help cover a ho hotel room. So um, yeah, I, I basically just was like trying to get rid of a bunch of Yu-Gi-Oh stuff and do vendors and stuff. So I, I, I was like really tired. I had been up all day i have been up since super early in the morning at this point it's kind of late in the evening for me and i'm like okay i only have to win this final round and i'm fine i'm set well i go up against orcus guy striker in this final round right so i sit down guy's super nice by the way super nice player for the final round and i'm just like super tired i see my opening hand i'm like bruh this is nuts like i go first and, or did I go first? Summer? Yeah, I think I won the dice roll from my remember. So I go first, I set up a whole bunch of stuff. I set up Endymion Negates and uh, Abyss Dweller, all, all that type of fun stuff. Basically, um, I'm like, look at this, I'm Gucci. Well, guy goes, guy playing Going Second Orchest, I think, something like that. Going Second Orchest, let's just say that he main decked evenly matched. And I just, and, um, and he managed to bait out all my stuff, and then he went just evenly match, and that was basically GG for game one. And then game two, I was like, oh, this guy wants to go second. So I decided to go second, and do sets up full Orcus board, and I just had made the biggest mistake ever, because that was what the guy kind of expected, I guess. I, I guess it was like reverse psychology, so yeah, I ended up losing that. Um, my final record was like X3 or something like that. So that was pretty close. I finished round, um, well, I know that the top cut was like top 128. And I know that I was around 150 to 170. So I was, or no, 170 ish. Something like that. I, I, I was close, but not close enough. So yeah, that's kind of like pretty much up until now. Now I'm just playing Ultra Geist and Aliens. I haven't played Aliens at Locals yet. I've been playing outside of Locals, test play it with people, and it's pretty fun. But in Locals, I've been doing really well with Alter Guys, averaging a lot of first and second places. So I'm kind of getting back into the group of Yu-Gi-Oh! again. Uh, in between that last event and this event, I was playing a lot of casual decks again. They were kind of really wasn't investing in the game. I didn't really want to invest it into the game at all. So yeah, I was playing a lot of casual stuff, decks. And so yeah, now I'm back in with Alter Guys. Um, that, that answers uh, the first question. Next question a lot of people ask me is, what was your favorite deck of all time? Favorite deck of all time would probably be Aliens or um, Metal Foes. It, it would probably be one of the two. I mean, I like Mermels, but not my, one of my favorites. Uh, so, yeah. How, how, so, the next one is, like, how 
someone asked me like how many different decks do you play around with like how often do you play around with the game all that type of stuff so on average um, online I usually spend I don't really spend too much time online I only test play like online when I want to test play a new deck I love test playing in person so I do that frequently um, I do vocals pretty much as much as I can um, I have quite a few vocals close to me so I definitely have a lot of options throughout the week and on the weekend for like locals I can go to and then um, for time put into the game I, I usually like in the evenings I usually turn on like some TV or a movie and I just play around with uh, some Yu-Gi-Oh stuff in the evening just do stuff like that um, I also got a lot of questions I think I uh, answered this one in another video but like what what is um, the bandwidth going to look like and Stuff like that. Like I've had that asked by both people at locals and people online and on Twitch streams. I think the ban list for the upcoming one. Now like I said, just keep it a lot more basic than my previous answers were. Um, well, the ban list will probably not do very much. There is it probably going to either a be delayed, and then after the first event, we might get like an actual real ban list. But if we get a ban list right now, or like in the month of September, it's not going to do anything. Konami wants people to play, not get discouraged, and they want people to play the decks now at larger scale events back like as soon as Corona finishes up. So they're probably going to wait until after the first large event and then come out with like a real ban list. At least that's my viewpoint. I've also gotten a lot of Alter Guys questions like how do you play Alter Guys, how do you get into Alter Guys. And once again, I'm going to keep this really brief. Alter Guys is a deck that requires a lot of technical skill in Yu-Gi-Oh! And you can't make mistakes with it. So what I would recommend doing is just test playing into every single deck you can, whether it's meta or not meta. Preferably the more meta, the better. And the more you test play with it, the better you're going to get, obviously. But it's really knowing interactions. And also do test hands and play out your test hands as well. And that kind of allows you to notice mistakes that you make that you can alter or fix at an actual event or at locals. Um, also, my other recommendation is always play 40 card alter guys. Try to get those imperms and extravagance. I know it's expensive, but the only bill I've seen that works with alter guys without imperms and extravs was the paleo bill I did and got like second place with it or something like that. I did really well with the uh, paleo alter guys the first time I picked up alter guys. I had no idea what I was doing, but you know, I still did decently well. So, um, yeah, I would recommend just trying out a lot. You're going to have to put in some effort, but if you really want to speed run things and or you're not able to make the local, just do a bunch of stuff online. Online is the best way to go and just play around with it a lot. Um, some other questions were, um, what's your opinion on the meta and how like is the meta doing and really I, my opinion, um, the meta is pretty nice right now. I, I think there's a lot of decks that have a lot of potential and I think before the Dogmatica and Inferno, Inferno Night stuff started getting really good, I think this game was even more healthier. Now that stuff's out, I, I think the game's still pretty healthy minus Dragon Link FTK and minus some of that stuff Adam Emancipators can do. But then again, every meta deck that comes out, they always have something that's super busted that puts them above the rest of the pack. So. Yeah, but I think right now it's a really good time to get into Yu-Gi-Oh. There's a lot of good options that I told people who comment that they're just getting back into Yu-Gi-Oh on uh, YouTube. Hey, uh, best time to get back into it. And I'm always willing to help out people. So if you guys see me on Twitch, I'm always willing to help out with your decks or answer some questions. So yeah, please hit me up on Twitch. I think I just answered five or six questions from the list. So yeah, thank you guys for watching. If you guys want to see this more stuff like this as part two, let me know. Um, let me know what you guys want to see for part two. Please like, comment, and subscribe. If you're not subscribed, then I would highly recommend it. And 1,000 subscribers by this time next year, please, because that helps out my ability to grow and it helps out with you know your knowledge of the game. As the channel grows, I can do more and more videos. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.